What's up kings and queens? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel today. I am the Eva Monroe and my most requested video recently over the past few days has actually been show us how to build the wall of water. So when I initially did this project, I actually did record it, but I didn't upload it because I didn't think anybody would care. <laughs> so I'm going to share that video with you guys today. But first, I know you guys like to get to the good stuff. I know some people are going to fast forward through this portion of me talking, but I can guarantee you, you'll be back because I'm going to share the biggest mistakes and regrets that I made during this project. And so pay attention so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. Okay. Now, if I could go back and do one thing over again, the main thing I would do is I would try to find a shower door that did not have a hole. And I suppose it's only extremely visible to me because I know it's there. Um, but they are out there. You just really have to search for them. However, if you cannot find one, what I did with mine was I filled it in with silicone and it works just perfect. And that just keeps the water from being able to run down the backside of the wall because you don't want the water to run down the backside. In my opinion, it's not as visually pleasing when it's running down the other side of the wall. Now, let me share with you the biggest mistake that I made, okay? I spent two weeks trying to figure out why my water was merely, I mean like dripping out of the holes. I started out, I had drilled about six holes in my tubing, hooked it up, the water was dripping. I said, I need more holes. I drilled more holes, same thing. My husband said, try to use PVC. So I used PVC, drilled the, what I thought was the perfect amount of holes. It did not work. Let me tell you what the problem was. Pay attention to this, okay? We built a pond out back and the first pump I tried to use pumped 250 gallons of water per hour. And it wasn't enough gush for me. So I decided to go with a pump that pumped 400 gallons of water. When I hooked that pump up, it worked perfect. The flow was amazing. So when it came time for me to go and get the supplies that I needed to do this, I just grabbed the exact same pump that I used for my waterfall out back. And it is this one. And actually, I'm sorry, 530 gallons was what I ended up using out back. I grabbed the same exact pump. What the problem was, and this is the main thing you want to pay attention to. I'm going to link the pump that I used in the description box below. I ended up finding it on Amazon. You want to make sure that your pump has the ability to pump the water up as high as your fountain is, because you will see there's actually a tube running from the pump up here and across the top. OK, so you want to look for the maximum pumping height, not how many gallons of water will flow through it per hour. I'm telling you, I spent two weeks making that very mistake right there. So what is the maximum pumping height? Let me give you a little example. If you make yours three feet high, you need to have a maximum pumping height, I would say, of four feet. Um, that way, you know you're going to get a good flow. If yours, mine is over five feet. I'm 5'3", so it is, it's here. Mine is probably, it's probably six feet. Um, you want to have a maximum pumping height, I would say of seven feet, at least six feet, but that's how you're going to get a good flow. And I can actually control the flow of this. We have lights in here, so it lights all up at night, but you can see the water actually runs down the front of the glass. Okay. 
Now, where can you, if you don't have a shower door just laying around, because some, some people do, people are really starting to do away with those. I know we did away with all of ours, but if you don't have one laying around, the perfect place to get a shower door is going to be Habitat for Humanity. That's the perfect place. Any type of renovation type spot that you have in your local city or town that takes um, used merchandise, as long as it's not cracked, doesn't have any stains or anything on it, um, and you can find one at a reasonable price. So what, another piece of advice I want to give you is do not, and I repeat, do not use acrylic or plastic. It needs to be tempered glass. That's the reason why a shower glass door just works so perfectly. It needs to be tempered glass. And that's because eventually the water stains and, and hard water and all that, you're not gonna be able to clean that off of acrylic or plastic without scratching it up where it actually comes off of glass very easily. And actually I have, um, treated my glass so that just with the same stuff that you wipe on your shower doors to keep hard water from building up on it, I have put that on there as well as I put like a cap full of bleach in there, probably like once a week. And that just keeps the water staining down. It also keeps it from clogging up the tubes and the pipes. Vinegar as well, vinegar does the same thing. So thank you guys so much for watching me. I hope you did not fast forward through this part of the video, but just a fun project that really looks nice and jazzy to warm up your outdoor space. Every outdoor space that we have has a water feature and a fire feature because I think the two just make the areas sexy. So until I see you again, be blessed and bye for now. If you try this, definitely let me know how it goes. Okay, so the very first thing I'm doing here is I'm going to start with my two by eights and I'm going to start building my box. And so it takes eight two by eights to build the box. Now, I didn't put precise measurements because it's going to depend on how wide you want your box, but I built my box four inches wider than the actual shower glass was. I need to add a disclaimer here. I am not a skilled carpenter. You should be using saw horses and everything else, but I've been doing this thing for a while, so I don't always play it as safe as I should. Now, I have my two boxes built because since I use the two by eights, I stacked one box on top of the other. I'm going to add some um, one buys in the corners to keep it together later on. Now we're going to put the bottom in because you got to have a bottom, right? And I'm also using two by eights for the bottom. Now I have my bottom assembled and I also have added the sides. Now my sides are an inch taller than my glass. I'm going to use this 2 by 12 to create a divider because initially I was going to do a flower bed in the front and water in the back, but I changed my mind about that. And I ended up completely filling it with rock, but I'm here I'm creating the divider. Measure 52 times, cut once. I, I can't teach my husband this. My husband doesn't get that. He measures once and then he cuts 32 times. <laughs> Safety first and always. All right, now look at that. Did that, did, did that thing just glide right in there? That's my happy dance. My thumbs up in my happy dance. Sometimes I get a little impressed with myself. All right, now I'm taking some one inch pieces of wood and what I'm gonna do with those is I'm going to create a place for the glass to sit between. So I space those only as thick as the glass is. And so I would say, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple centimeters 
Now I test my glass out to see if it sits in there properly and it does. So now I'm taking the pond liner and I'm only gonna line one side of the box because remember initially I was putting flowers in the front. And I'm taking my handy dandy staple gun. My staple gun is second in line to my hot glue gun. And I stapled that down. Now I left excess pond liner for a reason because I felt like it was better to have too much than to not have enough. Now I'm gonna set my glass in there and make sure it does what it's supposed to do. Now I'm screwing a screw in the front and a screw in the back up at the top and that's just to make sure the glass doesn't move while I'm doing other stuff. So here you'll see me filling in the hole with clear silicone. And I put a piece of tape on the back of it just so that the silicone would dry flat. Now I use some C clamps to actually to hold my hose and now I'm feeding it through. I would recommend that you drill the holes before you put it up there. I didn't do that, but it's too stressful to worry about not hitting the glass. So I added the one by eights all around the front for framing. And there you go, she's done. I know it looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. Remember my information my advice about the pump you will do great at this if you decide to try this project let me know in the comments section below until i see you again be blessed and bye for now